Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire, and today we're in a place where two rivers meet. Behind me is the River Ancombe, which flows through that lock right there at Ferriby Sluice and into the River Humber. Welcome to South Ferriby. South Ferriby is situated on the south bank of the Humber Estuary and three miles west of the Humber Bridge. North Ferriby is directly opposite on the estuary's northern bank. The population was 651 in 2011. It marks the point where the Lincolnshire Wolds meet the Humber Estuary and was, as the name suggests, the southern end of an ancient ferry over the Humber to North Ferriby. South Ferriby dates back as far as Roman times when there was a major settlement. It's known locally as one of the low villages at the bottom of a chalk escarpment where the chalk meets the clay. Transport here is pretty good. While South Ferriby's closest railway station is Barton upon Humber, by road it's close to the A15. That's the road that crosses the Humber Bridge to connect to the A63 and to Hull and the M62 motorway. The entry in the Doomsday Book records a church, a mill and two ferries. In order to sustain two ferries, that suggests that a prosperous trading community must have been flourishing at the time. There's a certain boaty theme to the Ferriby villages. The Ferriby boats are three Bronze Age British plank-built boats, parts of which were discovered at North Ferriby. We'll talk more about those when we come across that in the East Riding series. Only a small number of boats of a similar period have been found in Britain, and the Ferriby examples are the earliest known sewn plank boats found in Europe. There's another building that's been turned into residential use. That one there is the old chapel. Doesn't look much like a chapel now, does it? Both the Romans and the Saxons occupied this area before the Vikings came along in 870 AD. It's they who are responsible for the village's name, as they called it Ferger B, which means fairy town. Over time, that would become Ferriby. In much more recent times, the Nelthorpe family were prominent local landowners. Sir Henry Nelthorpe was the man who endowed the village's first free school in 1822. The village was one of the first to have piped water, with houses plumbing into the supply, which was put down to supply steamships. South Ferriby was once two villages, and that's sort of still the case now. The main South Ferriby village, which is where we are now, was one, and Ferriby Sluice to the west, which had a strong connection to brick manufacture, was the other. There was a mill at Ferriby Sluice, which was the home of Robert Franklin, or as he was known to some, the Miller Poet. I've got to say, this is a beautiful little village. I've never been here before. Lots of uh, little cottages, little red brick cottages, and some new builds as well, thrown in for good measure. It's a nice little mix of housing, and it's pretty, especially when the sun gets on it. A little later, we'll see Ferriby Hall, which is one of the village's grandest properties. In 1953, some contents of the house were lent to Hull Museum on permanent loan. The house was owned in the 1960s by the Booty family, but had to be sold after Leonard Booty, grandson of Frederick Booty, absconded with the family inheritance. Maybe a piece of unwanted history, the village was badly flooded in the storm surge of December 2013. We'll also talk a bit about Reeds Island, which is situated in the Humber, and although it doesn't fully belong to South Ferriby, as most of it is Winteringham Civil Parish, it's an important local landmark. The Lincolnshire Trust suggests it's an artificial island and a report from 1979 says that it was reclaimed. However, the site was for many years a large sandbank going by the name of Old Warp. South Ferriby even has a street named Old Warp Lane. 
Local Barton upon Humber historians indicate that both assertions about the island are indeed true. It says that two wrecks, including one which locals deliberately scuttled, helped to form the island off South Ferriby. The scuttling was to protect the banks on the southern shore. South Ferriby covers 6.4 square kilometres. Demographically, the population density is 101.2. Only nine people in the parish identify as anything other than white British, accounting for just 1.4% and the average house in the village goes up for sale these days for a pretty respectable £187,000. OK, change of route on the fly. If you look on the map, uh, you will see at this particular part of the village, there's like a little loop. And I was planning to walk around that loop and then back up there across, the, across, the, um, across this little hillside. There looks to be a footpath but uh, you can't get to it apparently because that uh, is as far as I can go on the public road at that gate there. So it's back this way. Now let's have a look at what amenities I found South Ferriby to have as I walked around the village. The Church of St Nicholas dates to the 13th century. It's a structure consisting of a nave, south transept, north porch and an embattled tower with pinnacles at the southeast corner containing three bells. The nave dates to at least the 13th century and the windows to the 14th and 15th centuries. It was remodelled in the early 19th which included the addition of the top part of the tower and again in 1889 by Hodgson Fowler. Well, we've seen cemeteries before uh, that have been on a hill, but look at this, look how steep this hill is. I'm holding the camera absolutely dead straight. Look at the incline here from the road up there, or footpath indeed, down to the church there. That's incredible, really steep. Over the porch is a tympanum on which is a sculpted figure of St Nicholas and on either side are symbolical figures of the sun and moon. The unusual north-south alignment of the current church is a legacy of Victorian enlargement. On Hawkstow Road we come across the Village Hall which is suitable for a variety of village events and is generally considered a lifeline to South Ferriby's residents. The primary school is interesting, that's because South Ferriby has a lot of old school buildings dotted around the village. This is the current primary school on the road towards Hawkstow. South Ferriby has two public houses. The Nelthorpe Arms can be found in the main village and it's recently undergone a refit in 2018 which breathed some life back into it. It's named after the same Nelthorpe family who at the beginning of the 19th century owned over half the village. They still have some major holdings today. The other pub is at Ferriby Sluice, the Hope and Anchor. The old red telephone box isn't a book exchange here, rather it's been repurposed to house the village's defib machine. There's two bus services here that run towards Scunthorpe. These are the 350 and 355 according to this bus stop. And the village has a general store with a post office. There's a garage too, which is located between the main village and Ferriby Sluice. For landmarks, we begin in the churchyard with the War Memorial, which towers above the village on the hillside. So this was the other end of it. You can see there's a road that runs across here. There's a sign on that gate there saying private. So it looks like some kind of parkland that I'm not quite sure what it is. Hopefully my research will find that out. It turns out it's Ferriby Hall, which is a private residence once again, having formerly been used as a nursing home. The figure of a Viking seen here on the hill as you climb up towards the church is pretty significant. South Ferriby lies on the route of the Viking Way, the 147 mile long distance footpath from the Humber Bridge to Oakham in Rutland. Beginning at the Humber Bridge and not counting Barton upon Humber, South Ferriby is the first major settlement that you will come across. This first section loops around the low villages before taking you into Barnaby Lewald. Now here's an unusual landmark that makes South Ferriby unique. This is an overhead conveyor belt that passes to the south of the village just outside the school. We'll see where this goes to when we reach Ferriby Sluice, but it runs from a quarry, Middlegate Lane Quarry. 
Now a private house, South Ferriby Methodist Chapel was a classic low church for this village on the Humber. The wooden seats here were marked and scuffed from generations of fisher folk sitting on them in their rough clothes. It's opposite the old chapel schoolhouse. Speaking of schools, here's the old South Ferriby Primary School. It's made up of three buildings, all in a row. The school itself, its library and its hall, all situated on the corner of School Lane and Low Street. The school was replaced by the new building we saw earlier. There's a memorial here to Janet and Trevor Smith, but I've noticed all along this wall, along the high street here, look at these. We've got a dragonfly, a bumblebee, butterfly, little insects all along this wall. That's a nice touch. I like it when villagers do things like this. Just gives them that, that little bit of character that I like. It's fabulous. Check out these likely characters on the wall too. Aren't they fabulous? Now here's a lovely little landmark. This is the horse pond, which was refurbished and made into what it is today by both the residents and the local cement works. And it's won awards, rightly so. It's a lovely peaceful area of South Ferriby where you can just sit and while away the hours in this quiet corner of North Lincolnshire. There's a really upbeat feel about this village and it's probably summed up best by this quote I found on a bench here at the pond. Always remember to forget the things that made you sad, but never, but never forget to remember the things that made you glad. That's amazing. I like that. I was just about to leave the pond behind when I noticed this sign pointing to some fairies. And here they are. To finish with, we find this lovely information board about South Ferriby, which is dedicated to Pauline Heathershaw, a local historian who loved to share her knowledge. Okay, uh, that's the main walk around South Ferriby completed. But of course, this area used to be two villages and we're now heading over to Ferriby Sluice. And uh, to be honest with you, there's probably just as much out there as there was right here in the main village. Let's go and find it. On the way to Ferriby Sluice, we passed by the local bowling green, so I stopped in and had a look. This wasn't the only thing I noticed whilst I was here though. Right, so my original plan was to walk down this footpath all the way to the sluice and back again, but I can't because it's closed for some reason. This path is called the Nev Cold Way, and uh, I don't know it's very windy, it's very windy. I don't know who Nev Cole is, but he's given his name obviously to this path. And under normal circumstances, you'd be able to walk all the way down to the sluice. And it does go a little bit further as well. It seems to go probably, I don't know, all the way into Barton maybe, I'm not sure. But it does go a little bit further. So yeah, I'm gonna walk back to the road. Like the Viking Way, this is a long distance path passing through a mixture of wild shoreline and controlled areas of natural beauty. It follows a more inland route from East Holton to the outskirts of Grimsby, where it turns inland along the River Freshney. It then passes through low-lying farmland and gradually moves into the beautiful and gently sloping Lincolnshire Wolds, passing through several small Wolds villages to Nettleton. Now we come to Ferriby Sluice, once associated with brickworks. These days, Ferriby Sluice is much more about a major local factory. That would be a cement works. The plant owned by Semex is a prominent landmark in the village and obtains its raw material from Middlegate Lane Quarry via that conveyor belt. So here's the sluice itself, traffic lighted as the A1077 road which crosses it is sometimes closed to let boats through. It crosses the River Ancombe, a tributary of the Humber. The river has been used by humans since at least 800 BC, confirmed by the excavation of a planked boat at Brig. One and a quarter miles away upstream is the impressive Hawkstow Bridge, which you can walk to from here along this footpath. 
Major changes to the Ankh home occurred in 1635, when a new straight channel, this channel you see before you, was constructed from Bishopbridge to Ferriby. The new channel carries most of the water and is known as the New River Ancombe. The old course is mostly reduced to a drain. The lock here was originally spanned by a swing bridge, but it was badly damaged in 1934 when a large vessel ran into it. The replacement swing bridge was built in 1935. Ferriby Sluice itself was reconstructed in around 1841. From that time onwards, the river was reasonably profitable, with the Ancombe generally carrying cargoes of sugar beet into the 1930s. All commercial carrying had ceased though in the 1970s and the 1980s. The upper section was almost derelict by then, but was restored and dredged in 2004. The river is still an important drainage channel for North Lincolnshire. It's also used for leisure though, which is why here there's a small marina. And overlooking the whole thing is the Hope and Anchor, which also has some pretty good views over the Humber and Reeds Island. Okay, so when I came down here, I was planning on parking in this car park, but as you can see, it's closed, which uh, really didn't help me. Uh, but I did eventually find somewhere to go. Anyway, that's pretty much it for South Ferriby and Ferriby Sluice. Time to give you a picture bit because I'm sure I've missed some things still. Here it comes right now. To finish with, we'll take a drive through Ferriby Sluice and back into the main village before turning south towards Hawkstone. And there you have it. This has been the parish of South Ferriby, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>